Hi there, my name is Flora Key, and I make abstract art. This video is about the style that I use in the creation of the majority of my own works, at the request of several people from across communities that I'm a part of to demonstrate my process. In addition to this explanation, I'll provide a bit of background and stylistic influence on my art, and also direct those that are interested in creating in this style to a new community built specifically for that purpose. See the description for more details, but let's start by describing what my art actually is and what it seeks to accomplish. If I were to give the style I use a provisional name, I'd call it glitch heart. This is to simultaneously distinguish it from glitch art, which is created using actual data manipulation of the original images without a photo editor, and to relate it to the metal heart and vector heart styles, both of which serve a heavy amount of influence on the elements of the works. The key elements of glitch heart art are motion, contrast, and texture. Similarly to metal heart and vector heart, the biggest emphasis of the style is in guiding the eye in a particular way, most commonly from a single point outwards, or in a more linear fashion from one edge of the work to another. Contrary to the two styles, however, is this increased focus on the many ways material properties can be expressed via a grouping of pixels. Consider how this work utilizes glow and streaks of light to emulate a glassy material, whereas this one has an almost ink-like look to its colors. Metal Heart indeed does this to a limited extent, but as the name implies, a majority of samples focus on metallic surfaces. However, it should be noted that texture in this way applies past the visual elements of materials and into the realm of visual patterning, a la Vector Heart, such as how this work creates many jagged edges and grainy shapes to convey a worn feeling. At a larger level, the composition of these elements don't exist in isolation. They must relate to the bigger picture. As such, many works of mine have very distinct expressions of contrast. This is the most extreme of such examples, contrasting with luminance, color, texture, and even visual busyness. Yet, this is a very basic description of what glitch heart art is and can be. These ideas are guidestones for the style, but experimentation and differentiation between artists is necessary towards the longevity of the design style at large. With all this in mind, let's create a glitch heart work. For all of my works, I have used Paint.net. It is a free and simple, yet shockingly powerful raster photo editor with hundreds of community-made extensions. Rest assured that you do not need to use this program at all, and that other options such as Affinity Photo, Adobe Photoshop, GIMP, and even Krita all have features that make them valuable to the creation of glitch heart art. After all, the level of familiarity with your editor you possess will mean much more to the final product than any individual feature can. To start out, we want an image of some sort. The amount the image selection impacts the final product is the extent to which we are deciding to edit it, and for glitch heart art, that usually means that it's more the editing process than the image itself that results in the final product. Because of this, for the sake of demonstration, I've taken an image of my computer setup that I will use to create our example work. Two features are incredibly useful to creating glitch heart works layer blending, and distortion effects. In any decently complex photo editor, you are able to manipulate the way in which two layers of a given project blend together. In the additive mode, for instance, the RGB values of the above layer are added to the below layer, causing a general brightness increase in specific parts of the photo. These blending modes largely affect the color more than anything, though, and merely duplicating a layer will cause quite boring results. A list of the formulas for various blend modes across all editors will be in the description for those interested. To complement the ways in which layer blending manipulates colors, you can also distort the above layer using various effects in our photo editor. This allows the blending to apply inconsistently to the photo, creating new shapes, textures, and movement from the previous image. This is the basic workflow for any glitch heart work, creating a duplicated layer of the original image, manipulating its contents, changing its blending mode, and then merging it back in to start again are the foundations of the style. This also means that glitch heart work can vary in how much it resembles its source. Some of my works have traces of the original photo in them, whereas others are a complete guess as to what they originally were. 
This level of granularity allows for glitch artworks to encompass a broad range of appeal and variation among artists. From the fundamentals, the sky is the limit. Finally, remember that the more you continue to manipulate a photo, the more unrecognizable it becomes. Any configuration of pixels in an image can become another one with enough editing. In this universe, the alchemists were right. Now, I'd like to take a moment to demonstrate the general process that I use to create glitch heart work. Hello everyone! We are in paint.net right now, and I'm going to create a sample work based off of my uh, computer setup. So this is an unscripted part of the video, so it'll be a lot less elegant in what I'm trying to explain here, but Really, the design process of Glitch Heart is very simple. You just want to create a layer, and then you can do stuff to it. I have a bunch of community-made plugins. Links to all of those might be in the description. Depends on how I'm feeling. But you can find them all in the Paint.net forums if uh, you're interested. Specifically, uh, Gmic or Gmic, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it has been an invaluable resource. I highly recommend going to their site and downloading at least this plugin because they have a bunch of stuff that I think is very helpful. But okay, um, let's just start by using XOR blend mode, which is something that is a common design pattern for me. Uh, every single time I do a glitch artwork. XOR is a blending mode that I guess does a bitwise uh, exclusive OR um, on every image, uh, and it makes it black if it's the same image. Um, it just makes this really, really interesting uh, glitchy effect whenever you use a distortion with it. I'm going to use Oblique alongside this, and that's going to sort of like italicize the entire image. Um, and I can set how much I want it to offset from the original image and how much it actually does the, the oblique part of it. So I can manipulate this heavily to give us um, a really cool and interesting kind of effect. I can turn up the step factor to make it even repeat itself a couple of times. Uh, I'm going to turn down the anti-aliasing just so that it, so that you can see it better when I try. But you can see how, when I mess with this, how all the colors get warped to non-recognition, and how there's, you know, overlaid computer screens on top of each other and everything. So this is a really cool and useful effect for just totally making everything chaotic. So we're going to uh, merge that into the original image so that I can then take a pixel sort to it. And we're going to do this by saturation. And we're going to change our intervals so that they do a nice little effect. We're going to change the column, I think. Um, and yeah, you can already see how cool of an effect we can get just by doing this. I'm going to not flip the sorting order. I'm going to turn the interval minimum down all the way, I think. That's a cool effect. Okay, so I'm gonna use that as our layer here, and I'm going to actually undo that so I can duplicate this layer, do it on that layer, and then we can see how this combines with other blend modes. Glow's pretty interesting, even though it's mostly the same thing. Ooh. I kind of like how it looks with negation. How's it look with XOR? Eh, roughly the same. Um, let's go with negation, because that makes our colors weirder. Let's duplicate our layer again. We will, let's say we want to gradient map this. Uh, it's going to take a lot of uh, messing around to figure out exactly what it is you want to do in a given image. But once you figure that out, it should be relatively easy to just mess around, come up with your own ideas for stuff, and uh, go from there. But uh, I didn't like how that looked, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I could... Uh, I could apply a color filter. Let's see what happens when I metallicize this. 
Yeah, that's roughly the same effect as we were getting before. Um, I think I need to make this even less like the original image. So I'm going to mess with the perspective a ton. And that is how we're going to go about this. Now, this does require a, a bit of trial and error a lot of the time. But now, now that our perspective looks like this, it's, it's a lot weirder and a lot more interesting. And we can use this to create even more shape in the image. Like if I overlay this, you can see how many like geometric shapes were forming just off of this alone. But actually, I'm going to do something a little bold here. I'm going to basically brightness contrast this so that it just looks like this. And then we're going to affect this layer with whatever it is we have. So I could do something like this where I have all of it go into here and it all lightens up or it, it all goes into the black pixels which I think is a really neat effect. I could have all the black pixels overlay over this, which is fine. I don't mind it. But actually, you know what? I'm not feeling this. But yeah, that's the thing about this is it's a lot of trial and error. You, you just gotta try things and figure out what works and what doesn't work and where you can go uh, using what you have. Um, I will say it does get easier to do this the more you do it. Um, for instance, like there's a lot of colors here, so I might want to quantize this for instance. And that's actually going to take a while because the image is very big. But if, if you know what to look for in an image, you can, you can sort of, um, mess around with it and get some really, really interesting effects. Um, let's try an effect I haven't done before, just to just to see. So we have this donut effect that creates a big old donut in the center of the image. It's got an internal radius, an external radius, a distortion angle. Ooh, that's pretty cool. If I make this massive, maybe... How do I... Can I just, like, absolutely and completely... Can I make it any bigger than this? That's a little bit of a shame. It's kind of it's kind of not that useful if I can't even like Oh. That's pretty interesting. Oh. Oh, that's real cool. I can reduce the amount of ripples. And I can also change the offset of it. So I could do this over here and I could turn all that there. I could run the plugin and then I could do it again in a different place and with, with more or less ripples. And that creates like a, a, a pretty interesting effect. So let's, uh, let's do that again. We'll do it up in the top right corner, I suppose. And then we'll increase the amount of ripples. And then let's maybe, uh, we, we could even like totally manipulate this like this if we wanted to. Oh yeah, no. We, we wanna keep the general vibes here going. Oh, that's so fucking cool. What happens if I turn down the... Okay, the radius matters. Highlight. Oh, okay, I see. That's pretty cool. Definitely more subtle than I... Or I definitely want it to be more subtle. turn the amount down. Okay, and then we'll go with that.
that's really fucking cool. And then we could even mess with this further with, you know, symbol distortions and and stuff like that, right? Like it literally, the sky is the limit. And I don't really want to zoom it. <laughs> um, let's do... I don't know, what's tile reflection look like? Oh, it's kind of it's kind of like a... Like those glass blocks that you see in some, some buildings. That's kind of fun. I like that. Um... I wonder what page curl does. Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay, we're not doing that, but that, that does make a lot of sense. Um, jitter is a pretty classic one. I, I could do that. Turn the width up, maximum distance. That looks pretty cool. Maybe not nearly to this extent, but Yeah, that, that, that's just a nice texture. Okay, now we're going to focus on making the color, I guess, a little less all over the place. So um, there are many ways that you can do this, really. You could uh, you could black and white it and then increase the brightness contrast a bit. Um, I'm not gonna, not that much, obviously, but you can, you can do something like that. Why does that still have color in it? I don't know. Oh, it's because, oh, hold on. The jitter, I, I did the setting wrong. And this is a blending mode that I forgot about. Um, so yeah, be careful with certain plugins, their edge behavior. You do wanna make sure that they're actually doing what they need to do so they look nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have this now, so you can, uh, you can change the brightness and contrast of the black and white that you do. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to use that and then I'll just click OK. So there's our black and white. And then how we would want to do that after the fact is you could use Duotone and uh, manipulate it in a way like that. So where it has that, I prefer uh, gradient mapping over this. I think it is so much easier to use if you're going to do something like this. I'm going to turn that all that color and I'm, I'm going to use a contrast here. Um, and we're just going to move these until they look nicer, right? Want to include some details, but not too much detail. Obviously, saturation is not going to do anything if it's a black and white image. Actually, that does bring up some good points. If I do this with a saturated image, I could, I could do it like this. Da 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 da. And you can kind of see how it creates a really weird like gray effect around the edges too, because of this. Oh, I created more than one color. That's why it happened that way. If I delete this color, no. Ah, yeah programs can be kind of a bit annoying, unfortunately. Um, and I'm working a bit fast because I want to demonstrate this as quickly as possible. But, um, but yeah, you can see how, how that looks as well. I actually really like how that looks on its own. So we're going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with the color a lot. I'm going to use this thing called Psycho Color, which is so wild. It I, I don't exactly know what it does all that well, but it can add a lot of like very interesting like color variation to your work. I just really, really like it. Actually, I'm going to add a gradient here. So um, I'm just going to pick out a random color, pick out another random color here. I think that looks decent. Let me just figure out a way of making this look nice across all of them. Let's make it a bit redder, 
make it a little saturated, a little darker. And then we'll make this one a bit brighter. And then we want this to be the oh, we want this to be the majority of the color that's there with that as a light bit of that. And then we can do this with a few parameters. I think that looks pretty nice. Um, ooh. I like how negation looks with that, honestly. Glow looks interesting. I mean, glow could be better if I just reduce how much it does that like actual glow effect, but I'm, I'm not really keen on that, I think, personally. Yeah, I mean, we'll go with negation here, and then I kind of don't want to start the color at the bottom. I think that looks kind of unnatural to me. And that might be just because of the amount of movement that's happening up top here. But I, hmm, if I, if I turn this like 180 degrees, yeah, I think that looks better. All right. And then that, that'd be it. That's your finished work. You could even mess around more with hue and saturation. Um, just like changing the colors that are actually present in there. I think I actually do like the colors that I have already, so I'm not going to change them, but yeah, that's basically how you make a glitch heart work. You could do so much stuff, and you can see in my own work the sheer amount of variation that exists within a single work. So I hope this gives a, a better understanding of what goes into something like this. Glitch chart is a very unorganized movement as of yet, but it can be so much more with your help. If you're interested in appreciating, funding, or even creating glitch heart art, I highly recommend joining the glitch heart discord, link in the description. There you'll be able to post your own work, seek feedback, and socialize in a hub of creativity for even styles just adjacent to glitch heart. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please follow my Twitter if you'd like to see more of my art as I continue to make it, and please subscribe if art-related content is your thing. I also have a Ko-fi if you're feeling very generous that you can donate or commission me through. Take care, and have fun creating!